Well, before we start the show today, I just want to remind everyone that we are still collecting coats for Ukraine. We're gathering them up. You see hundreds of coats here in our chapel. We've laid them out here. We're praying over them. And we're believing that we're going to send thousands of coats over to Ukraine to minister to the millions of people that are without homes right now, that are living in schools and doing so many things that are, are, are just, can, I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine that? You know, there's a miracle in your closet. And we just are asking you that you would go in there and that you would uh, find a coat or maybe buy one. Or maybe you could even send a donation to Cornerstone just for the coats for Ukraine. And we will take the, all these coats, we'll box them up, we'll send them over to the Ukraine. They'll be hand-delivered by uh, Orphan's Hands, the people that we're working with over there. So please be a part of this. God is doing great things. As you can see, many people are responding. We're expecting many more. We only have till September 26th, so you can drop them off here at the station here in Wall, Pennsylvania. Please be a part of it. Today, it is amazing to be with you. We have an amazing amount of coats and there is an amazing amount of grace today. I'm here with Tom Hollis and we are amazed to be with you. <laughs> and I'm amazed at all the coats, I, as you just saw. I am, I'm so excited about that. You were that. swimming in I'm, coats. I'm swimming. It, it, people were dropping them off. Someone dropped off bags of brand new coats just last evening. Uh, thank you, whoever you are. We didn't even get a chance to meet you, but thank you. And we are seeing so many people do that. Amy, we've got a great show today. Chris Wu is going to be with us. Sydney did an interview with him just a little while ago. He is the first violinist for the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, a strong Christian. He's going to play for us, but he's also uh, going to tell his story. You know, he says something that I think is great. Every day is a gift and uh, he talks so about true. the struggles he went through too and the, the, the challenges, but every day is a gift. Do you know the struggle and the challenges it took even to become a first violinist? I mean, this is the concerto. This is the, this is the man that everybody in the entire orchestra is looking to. He's leading the melody. He's leading the way. He picks up the leads in this beautiful symphony. And you know what? It's not without struggle that you learn something, you grow through something, there's there's times of pain and, and turmoil and even just playing a violin in a symphony. Sometimes it doesn't sound good, but God has a way of making something beautiful, a beautiful sound and a beautiful noise out of all of the seasons of our life. Well, isn't, isn't that interesting? I mean, talk about a spiritual application, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, that we could... Uh, struggle to get to the place where we're really in tune with God, we're really moving. And then even in that, there is a, a battle that goes on. Even in that, even when we get to that place, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have, you know, God kind of takes us through these uh -huh. challenges to get us up a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And then he says, hey, I've got even another place for you to go. He's got, he's got that for you today. Even the amount of hours and hours and years and decades that it takes to learn something, yeah. to learn this violin, the same way we ought to be with the Word of God, Tom. Hours, decades, feasting, growing, educating ourselves in the Word of God. So then when that moment comes and it's the symphony and your first violin and it's time for you to show up, all those years of, of filling your life with the Word of God, it comes out. Well, you know, I, I heard a, a famous musician, I'm, the name escapes me right now, but he said, if I miss a day of practice, I know it. If I, if I miss a couple of days, my, my uh, fellow musicians know it. If I miss a week, everybody knows it. Wow, <laughs> and, and see, that's, so good. that's the thing is, our life is hidden in God and we need to have that daily relationship with something that needs to be maintained. And we, you know, we've talked about that a lot, but it's so easy to let that slip, Amy. It's so easy to let those things get away from us, mm -hmm. that time with God. I know, and that's why we're gonna take time now and we're gonna test Tom and I's <laughs> time with God because it's time for Stump the Host. Yeah. 
This is good. I wish you were joining with us and I wish you could be one of our lifelines today. What did Balaam's donkey see that made it refuse to move? It was an angel with a flaming like, sword. Yeah. yeah, angel with a flaming sword. Okay. An angel with the sword numbers 22, 21 through 30. Isn't that cool? Uh, a donkey saw an angel. A donkey saw what his master did not see. Did not see. That's right. Wow, that, that'll about, preach that'll right pre there. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> that'll preach. All right, here's our next one. So they're supposed to be getting a little bit, a little bit harder here. Uh, so here's the question. Who restored Paul's sight after he was struck with blindness? I know this one. It's Ananias. Yeah, because he was told to go to him. And he didn't want to go. And he wouldn't want he to go. He didn't want to go. Ananias. But he wanted to see. All right, yeah. He, Acts 9, 17 through 19. He, I remember I, I, uh, I was in a play about this whole thing, a little skit, and, and really? Ananias was like, I don't want to touch that guy with a 10-foot pole, you know? Yeah, and right. Because, because he had been persecuting the church. But mm -hmm. it was all part of God's plan. He hated Christians. Yeah. And that pro some of them were probably like, finally, God made him blind, yeah. you know, so he can't find us and kill us. Okay, which book was the Ethiopian traveler reading when he met Philip? Okay, this is Acts chapter 8, and I, I teach <laughs> out of Acts chapter 8 all, the, all time. the time. So it was Isaiah. It was reading in Isaiah. Hey! Acts 8, 26 through 40. That's right. I feel like we you got... did you did the whole thing. <laughs> All I know is we I got. Mean, I knew two of them, but <laughs> there you go. That one, uh, yeah, that's good, man. This is what we need. We need to be filled up in the word. I'm actually reading right now in Acts 18, 19, 20, 21. Mm, so good. Acts is one of my favorite books because I feel like it's where we're supposed to be as yes, well. We're amen. supposed to be empowered by the Holy Spirit taking the gospel to the people around us and across the world who need to hear it. Well, we're going to hear now uh, the interview that Sydney did with Chris Wu. And again, he is uh, the first violinist for the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Let's go to the interview. Chris Wu is a first violinist for the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, and he's a man of faith, passionate about how music has the power to carry us through some of the darkest and hardest seasons of our lives. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on Hope Today. Thank you for having me, Sydney. Well, you know, you have a gift that has taken you all around the world, and just can you share with us how you knew that this was your passion, that God said, this is what you're called to do in your life? Well, I'm so, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm so blessed to be here because prayer, you know, in the word it says pray without ceasing, and it is so evident here. And I think prayer and music have a connection in that it draws us all closer to God. Um, I grew up, I always joke around that I grew up in a, a traditional Chinese family, but I had a tiger mom before the book actually came out. <laughs> And she made me practice every day. I, I wanted to play outside with my friends. I wanted to play football and actually just have a good time with everybody. But she knew that the discipline would really um, be good for me. Not, if, not that it, actually she didn't want me to become a musician because in a traditional Chinese family, there are doctors and lawyers and not musicians back you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, so I played and I just loved playing for people. I felt a connection that I didn't feel talking, but I felt a wonderful connection when um, I could play for friends and family. And so I grew up and I, I played, and um, my, my father actually was the one who really inspired me to play classical music. Mm -hmm. He loved classical music, and, and we would sit at the dinner table and he would say, guess the composer. And I, I, we had no idea, but he would still have fun playing the game. Um, unfortunately, my father passed away when I was 14. And that was sort of the first God grabbing me. Actually, that's when I really felt the Lord's presence. Um, I was playing at his funeral and I was crying uncontrollably. And my sister was squeezing my hand so hard and I had to play right after this moment where I was crying. And I felt this hand on my heart and it was the Lord and, and, I, and I knew it was the Lord. And I was like, okay, I can, we can do this, you know, we'll be okay. God will provide for us, even though my dad's gone. But it took a while for me. I battled, you know how you kind of have this battle with the Lord, it's like, wait a minute, this isn't right. This yeah. isn't like, this isn't the way it should be. But the Lord sort of makes it 
clear that he has you in the palm of his hand mm -hmm. and even though it doesn't work out the way you want it it's his plan yeah. and it's not ours and it took me a long time because i rebelled against that um it actually took me to a to another um to an, you know i was joking with you before we were talking about being peter you know denying jesus three yeah. times i i went the second thing that was really traumatic for me was i went out the back windshield of a car in aspen colorado and I was visiting a friend and he had a brand new sports car and long story short, we went over a cliff, he missed a curve and we went over a mountain and after about two turns, it hit a tree and I went out the back windshield of the car so you can see some scars, I got cut here. Um, and as God would create this story, Nothing happened to my hands. I broke my collarbone, but I was actually playing my violin in the hospital a week later. I have a balloon in my head and I have a broken back and all these different um, injuries, but thankfully um, nothing happened to my hands. That's a great, so you said you, a week later, like after you had this very traumatic event, that you were playing your violin, and even in those moments, did you just even sense a greater presence of God, of just saving your life and just that connection? Absolutely. You know, we like to think that we have control, but you know, it's all God. Yeah. And even when we think, you know, God has a way of reminding us it's all about Him and it's all about His glory, and when we play, it's, it, it, it's about Him. And, and that's the struggle that I have each and every day. Um, which takes me to my, my third Peter story, you know, my third denial. Um, the third thing was that my, my wife and I wanted to have children. We got married late in life, we wanted to have it, and, and we went through all the procedures and tried, and nothing worked. Um, and then we just sort of gave up. We, we were gonna go the adoption route, and we tried all these medical procedures, and nothing worked. And then, as God would have it, you let go and you let God and God took over and we got pregnant and we said, God's grace. So we had a daughter and we named her Grace. And um, as she was developing in my, my wife's womb, I would play every single day, every day, or every, maybe not every day, but certainly every week I would play. play through that and then she was born mm -hmm. and they put her on the table and I, I always people laugh at me but I'm probably one of the few people that had their violin in the delivery room <laughs> so I was like I want to play for my daughter as soon as she's born mm -hmm. so they put her on um, uh, they, they delivered her and put her on the table and she started crying mm -hmm. so of course I walked over and started playing mm -hmm. And about after about four seconds, she stopped crying. Mm. And it was like, okay, Lord, I got it. <laughs> and it was like the greatest gift, other than knowing Jesus, the greatest gift to have this opportunity to have a child, to play for my child, and to have it through music mm. speaking to her and me. The, the one side story that I have to say is, as I'm playing and all the doctors and I'm, we're enjoying that moment. She's crashing, her blood pressure went down and thankfully she was like, um, excuse me, I'm really not doing well here. <laughs> She's fine and everything worked out great, but um, it was a moment that I will never forget and I love to tell the story of just how the music brought us closer and it's certainly the connection that I have with my daughter even today and it's actually my favorite thing to play in the world. Oh, Amazing Grace is your Amazing favorite. Amazing Grace is the favorite. And how old is your daughter now? My daughter is 18 oh, wow. and is actually going to go to West Virginia University next oh, year. Congratulations Thank Grace. You. And you know I just want to ask you Chris, what does the word grace mean to you? Unmerited favor. We, we don't deserve, we deserve death. And every day is a gift. And there are so many distractions, as I'm sure you know, Sydney. There's so many things pulling us away. Our phones, the TV, you know, shows, people. And it's wonderful that we have a loving God that cares for us beyond even what we can imagine. I don't think, I, I know certainly for me, 
I don't have even the slightest clue of how much he loves me. I just am so grateful that he does. And, and as we were talking earlier, things don't always work out. And even when things don't work out, it's when he shows up even more. And his love is, you know, made perfect in our weakness. It surely is. You know, I just feel, Chris, that can you just play Amazing Grace to, like, close us out in our interview? Because I just really believe that someone needs to hear that and to experience that. So can you play Absolutely. Amazing Grace? So beautiful. You just feel like the sweet presence of the Lord just in this space and in this room. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your testimony and your gift of music with us. Thank, thank you for having me, Sydney. We're so glad that you were with us today. And I just want to encourage you today that you can give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. And we just encourage you in this moment that you would experience God's grace, his unmerited favor, his love and his blessings and his mercy over you today. We'll be right back. can I know God's will for me? It's a question that haunts us all at times. When we're looking for the right job, thinking about moving to a new city, or deciding whether or not to get married. We long for God's direction and His warm reassurance that we're heading the right way. A Cloud by Day, A Fire by Night captures A.W. Tozer's teaching on the will of God. Inspired by the story of God leading his people out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, Tozer's wisdom and biblical insight will help guide you in decisions of your own. You can be reassured of God's presence every step of the way. Request your copy of A Cloud by Day, A Fire by Night with your best gift to support Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org donate. Thank you for your partnership. Are you like me and you're still basking in that Chris Wu violin solo, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Isn't that... Talk about amazing grace. In 2 Timothy 1 verses 9, it says, For God saved us and he called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show his grace through Jesus Christ. Tom, it's not that we deserved it. Right. We deserved sin. He was perfect. He was flawless. He was without sin. We're the ones that fell short. We were the ones with sin. 
but by God's grace, he said, I'm going to step up to the plate and I'm going to take ownership. And I want them to live as free men and free women. So today there's nothing, Tom, like the grace of God. You know, Chris mentioned in that interview, um, he said grace is unmerited favor. Now, that's like a classic definition, uh -huh. unmerited favor. In other words, we did not have merit within ourselves. We did not have the goodness within ourselves, the good deeds within ourselves, anything that's within ourselves that could earn the grace of God, the favor of God, the smile of God upon our life. But we have all that because of the grace that has been given to us through Jesus Christ. So we have that today. And, and if you're a Christian, you have those things. You need to just walk in those things, realizing that his grace, you know, I like to think about this too, Amy. Grace is also the divine enabling mm -hmm. that gets me as a Christian. I know that I've got the grace of salvation, right. but it's also the power and the divine enabling to get me to that next place I need to go, where God's calling me, where God's making me effective for his kingdom, where God is giving me peace. Mm -hmm. I love places of peace. You know, I'm always looking for like, we go up the cabin, you know, it's yeah. like that place of peace. The phone doesn't even work up there. So everything's, like, <laughs> everything's like a place of peace. Those are great places, but we need the grace of God to enter into that peace and to enter into those uh, places of battle and places of peace. Well, and I believe, Tom, what you said was so important because I believe that even if you're going through a storm, even if you're going through that wreck in life, that you can have such a deep grace and peace on the inside. People will look at you and say, what is wrong? Why isn't she falling apart? Why isn't she beside herself? Why isn't she on medication? It's, I'm telling you, you, you tap into that grace of peace that grace of favor, that grace of joy that's down in your life. God makes deposits in his kids and those are there for us to tap into. You know, I was listening to a song this morning and I thought it, it applied to grace so much, Tom, because, you know, we talk about those times of Egypt where there's oppression right. and hardship and really a time of slavery. And this song is about Egypt. It says, because you stepped into my Egypt, you stepped into my oppression, my slavery. I was a slave to sin. I was oppressed by the devil. And you took me by the hand and you marched me out in freedom straight into the promised land. And that's what God wants to do for you today. That's what the grace of God is. He goes right into your Egypt, right into those times of oppression, depression, slavery. And he takes us by the hand and he rips us up and he takes us. He doesn't just rescue us, Tom, from the, the time of, right. of Egypt, but he brings us into the promised land land. I, I love Huge. that. And I, I love that, you know, I was listening to music this morning too. Uh, Aaron Williams, who was on the, the show a couple yeah. weeks ago, Walk by Faith. I was listening to that song. And he, and, and you think about faith, you know, it says by grace, we've been talking a lot about grace, by grace, you have been saved through faith. That it's not of ourselves. So how do you enter into the grace of God? Well, realize it's in there, it's given to you. By faith, begin to walk in those things that God shows you. Begin to walk in an area, you know what? Maybe you, you are the one today that you know, you're, 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 you're out of it. You're out of it spiritually. Well, begin to walk again by faith, trusting in the grace of God. The God that saved you is not gonna let you fail. The God that's, that poured out his entire self, his, he gave of his son, that God is not going to cast you away easily. He is right. not going to say, no. oh, well, you messed up. Oh, well, you're discouraged. I'm going to, I'm going to toss you away. Mm -hmm. No, this is when he runs to you. This is when he says, just believe in me. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Well, let's walk by faith. It's, as you said, takes by the hand, take yeah. him by the hand. Yeah. You're, listen, you might be praying for somebody today and you might feel like, they're a lost cause, but I just want to encourage your faith today. I mean, I got a text from an older uncle a couple of months ago that finally found Christ Praise after decades and decades of living his own life, going his own direction, not 
you know, no God in his life at all. And then all of the sudden the grace of God met him and he came face to face with Jesus and his life was changed. I mean, you might believe, be believing for a young adult or a teenager or a kid or a husband or a wife or a family, a mom or a dad. You might be standing in faith, keep believing because God's grace is going to go to them. And listen, we pray right now that the eyes of their heart are flooded with light, that God would send laborers across their path. I believe very strongly right now that something is going to change in that person's life that you're believing for. Today is the day of salvation. And maybe today is the, to the day of salvation for you. Maybe you've been running from God. Maybe you've turned your back on him. Maybe you've been like rebellious towards the things of God. And maybe today is the day to say, you know what? It's by God's grace. I'm even here and alive and breathing. So today's the day to surrender your heart to Jesus. Just give him everything. Just say, have it all. I can't do this in my own ability. And God's grace will come in. He'll set you free. He'll rescue you. He'll save you. And make sure when you ask Jesus to come into your heart that you give us a call at 888-665-4483. We love to hear from you and how God is touching your life. You said a really big word. You said surrender. You said that word. And you know, a lot of times we have prayed with people and they've prayed the prayer. And I, I don't want to discount that because that's the gospel. That's, that's the entry port of how God gets into our life. We invite him in. But have you surrendered to the Lord? That's what I want to ask you today. Have you surrendered and said, I'm throwing myself completely on your grace, on your will for my life, God. I know you have the best for me. I know you have the, the, the desire to, to uh, take my life and, and make it, what, like there's an old song that says, take my life and let it be consecrated yeah. Lord to thee. Well, that's surrender. Consecration is surrender, Amy. It's throwing yourself completely on the plan of God for your life. Surrendering to God's one of the best decisions I've ever made. It's one of the best decisions you'll ever make. I love what it says in Psalm 56, in God I trust. That's why you can surrender your life today because it's in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? For you have delivered me. He's delivered us from death hell and the grave from being separated from him for eternity. You can be at peace with God. We talked about the violin bringing such peace and the music and the strings. You can have that same peace inside with God. The first act, that first step is surrendering to him and giving him your life. So when you hear that violin and you, you just want to sit back and go, oh, that is so peaceful. You know, you can have that in the middle of the storm. You can have that in the middle of your day today, whatever you're going through today. Do you know that God is intimately acquainted with what you are going through today and, and, the, and the cares and concerns that you have? God's given you a heart to feel those things. So take that time to realize that the grace of God is extended to you right now. He is, play, he is, he is the one playing that music in your heart that brings you that peace. Have a great day.